Welcome everyone to NBCCD's 2020-22 virtual winter open house. We're so happy to have you with us. My name is Kaylee Moore. I'm the Chief Marketing and Recruitment Officer at NBCCD, and I also have the pleasure of being your MC for today's event. So to start us off, NBCCD's elder in residence, Ron Tremblay, has prepared a recording for you to acknowledge the land in which our college community creates, learns, and thrives on. Wallastogug Land Acknowledgement. NBCCD resides on Wallastogug, the unsurrendered and unceded homeland of Wallastogewiak, people of the beautiful and bountiful river. Wallastogug is secured by the treaties of peace and friendship, which Wallastogewiak, Mi'kmaq, and the Pascadamogadi first signed with the British Crown in 1775. The series of peace and friendship treaties recognize the lands of Wabanagiyag. The treaties did not deal with surrender of lands or resources, although acknowledge Wulastagawi, Migama, and Peskudamukadi title to the land and launched a decree of peace and friendship to confirm ongoing nation to nation peaceful relations. NBCCD is located at Ekpahag, presently called Fredericton, and surrounding area. Baliwin. Perfect. Thank you. So I would now like to welcome um, our college director, Dr. Carrie Nolan, um, to officially welcome you to our winter open house. Carrie. Thank you so much, Kaylee. And hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, as college director, it's my privilege that you would spend some time uh, on a Saturday with us. So my privilege to welcome you to this webinar and open house and hopefully to welcome you next fall to our college. Half of you have applied, so that's fantastic and, and that's in process and half of you are still thinking about it. So hopefully today helps you make that decision. At NBCCD, we're here to help you forge sustainable, creative careers. There's a world of possibility out there and we're here to help you with that. If you are a person who values community, and you're curious and creative about the world around you, then I think this is a great place to come and continue your learning journey. When we talk about community, that really is the who that you'll be learning with and how those who's will surround you. And first off, our instructors and our staff that support you are incredible. They're gonna know you uh, and invest in you. And they're also super passionate about craft and design. And so you'll kind of catch energy and fire from, from their work uh, and their teaching of you. The who is also your cohort and your classmates and this place. And it is a real community here. My office is above the second year ceramic studio and I hear the music and the laughter and the conversation. And we're almost two years into a pandemic and we've had distance from one another. And in this place, that's, we're obviously responsibly distant, but you're still here together making and learning and laughing. And I just love that so much. Curiosity is about the questions you ask. And we really care to help our learners ask great questions and then explore answers to those through your creativity. And if that sounds like a type of place and a type of learning that you want, I hope you'll come make us home. So thanks again, you're in for a couple hours of great learning about this college, and I hope it will help make your decision easier to join us. Thank you so much, Carrie. Um, just so you guys know, we're so lucky to have such an empowering leader at our college. Um, Carrie, you know, you heard her speak about the faculty and the staff and the community here, but we are lucky to have someone who um, cares so deeply about student well-being 
She's brought incredible change to our campus, such as expanded services for mental health and academic resources for our students. So it's really an exciting time to not only work at, but more importantly, to be a student at the New Brunswick College of Craft and Design. So since we can't all be together on campus today, um, which is okay because it's so exciting to see all um, the many corners of the world that you're tuning in from today, we are going to play a guided video tour so you can see our facilities and our buildings and our classrooms. Um, and the tour is actually hosted by one of our graduates of NBCCD, who is now our photography and videography studio technician. So you'll get to hear from her and I'm going to play that for you right now. And when it's done, I'm actually going to send you the YouTube link in the chat so you can rewatch it for yourself in case you're having any audio issues or want to revisit that video. College of Craft and Design. Here we empower learners to forge sustainable, creative careers. Hi folks, I'm Haley Fail and I graduated from the Photography Diploma Program here at NBCCD. I also work for Created Here Magazine and at the college now as their photo studio lab tech and I'll be your guide today. At NBCCD, students have multiple opportunities to showcase their work and sell it. The college owns the George Fry Gallery, located in downtown, where we feature student-made art throughout the year. This is also where our admissions officer, Emily, and recruitment officer, Trudy, are located. If you're in the area, feel free to stop by. They can answer any questions about programs and or the application process. Our college store is attached to the main college building and easily accessible for students to go and purchase any specialty art supplies and or design products for classes or personal projects. The NBCCD campus is located in central downtown Fredericton, right next to the beautiful Wallstuck River. Close by are shops, dozens of restaurants, and a really active local art scene. On our campus, you will find designated spaces to learn and develop your skills in each of our 10 studios. This includes ceramics, jewelry metal arts, Photography and Videography. Textiles. Fashion. Wabanaki Visual Arts Advanced Studio Practice Three D Digital Design Graphic Design In each of our programs, you'll only have about 12 to 15 students in each class. This means that all the instructors will know you by a first name basis and they'll be able to help guide you into your individual learning journey. This year, we also have a newly created Learning Commons. The Learning Commons is home to approximately 4,500 books on craft and design accessible to our students. Here, students can have a place to eat their lunch, socialize between classes, study, escape, and browse books on campus. Our staff is friendly and knowledgeable, and they're here to support you on your journey. Our in-house counselor on the fourth floor, Christy, is available anytime you need to chat. 
Close by, you'll find the Student Life Coordinator, who's the first point of contact for students who may have questions about life in Fredericton, special services, and or programs at NBCCD. NBCCD is a small campus of only 300 people, and that includes staff and students. Here, you'll find a community that you can call home, and you'll find out that you can turn your passion into your livelihood. We are NBCCD, and we can't wait to see you this September. Just a disclaimer about the video, we actually shot that less than a year ago, but we already have some new staff and new programming at the college. So I highly recommend referring to our website for the most up-to-date information about staff members and student services that will be available to you if you were to come to NBCCD. So now that you've gotten to see the college, um, we're gonna dive into all things courses and programs and talk a bit more about Fredericton. So I'm gonna invite Trudy to join us back on screen and take it from there. Thank you, Kaylee. I just wanna give you a brief overview of the history of MBCCD. You may have heard of us, but we've been established since 1938. We started out as a program for fishermen and seasonal workers to improve their off-season skills. While growing steadily in programming for more than 80 years, we have remained a small competitive college that is very well known for its hands-on learning and unique programming. We are in the heart of downtown, surrounded by shops, businesses and services. So let's begin with showing you our four different pathways. We offer you an entry year called Foundation Visual Arts. This entrance is for all high school students and any students who do not have a post-secondary education in the arts. MBCCD is located physically in downtown Fredericton at the St. John Arts Center in St. John, New Brunswick and online. This first year of FEA is followed by the two-year diploma program of your choice. For those interested in the Bachelor of Applied Arts, we are pleased to offer you this option in partnership with the University of New Brunswick, located just up the hill from MBCCD. For graduates from our two-year diploma programs or from any other post-secondary art degree in established practice, we offer a certificate in advanced studio practice. Now, I just wanna tell you a little bit about the Bachelor of Applied Arts. If a degree is what you want, MBCCD offers a pathway with the partnership of the, excuse me, the University of New Brunswick, only a 20 minute walk or quick bus ride up the hill from MBCCD. Two years of academics at UNB and two years of hands-on learning comprised of one year of FEA and the first year of any two-year program will result in a Bachelor of Applied Arts. Most students choose to start and fit or stay and finish their diploma program so that they have a certificate in foundation visual arts, diploma of their choice, and a Bachelor of Applied Arts. You can begin in either location, but you must register with UNB first. And a word on our advanced studio practice, this is a one-year certificate program. It is not a degree and it's not related to any degree. Usually students are NBCCD's own graduates who wish to pursue independent studies, learn a new technology, or create an updated portfolio while spending half their time in their studio of their current practice and career and the other half in intensive business practices. Graduates of other art degrees with an established studio practice may also apply. So let's dive into our list of programs. The first one, so this is Foundation Visual Arts. It's always the first one. Then it's 3D Digital Design, Ceramics, Fashion Design, Graphic Design, Jewelry Metal Arts, Photography slash Videography, Textile Design, Wabanaki Visual Arts, advanced studio practice, and Bachelor of Applied Arts. So let's get into a little bit of the meat of the programs. As I've said, the first year is called Foundation Visual Arts. 
most students begin with our entry year called Foundation Visual Arts. This is an intensely rich and diverse curriculum where you learn everything you need to be a great designer in any field. You will also get to try all eight of our studios hands-on. You might find something you love and want to make your career, something you like as a hobby, and just as importantly, something you don't like. But by the time you graduate with a certificate at the end of the Foundation Visual Arts year, you will have found your passion. Using your marks, you will apply into the two-year diploma program of your choice. We are proud of not having a house style or specific style in our programs. We teach you the foundations, tools, equipments, and entrepreneurial skills to tackle anything you decide to take on after graduation. From Visual Art, the first of our programs is 3D Digital Design. Do you love the internet, love playing games, and want to learn to build them in virtual reality environments? This could be the program for you. You will learn about virtual reality, developing games, and some software. But most importantly, you will learn to use your computer and your skills to creative problem solve. You will also learn about the world of 3D printmaking. Our graduates often work for the military as a consultant for training content and for companies locally and internationally. So ceramics is always a big favorite. It's all things clay. You will learn different kinds of clay, how to develop your own unique glaze and try different kilns. There will be field trips to work with established ceramic artists and opportunities to learn to sell your own work through our annual holiday craft show and sale by taking part in a wholesale trade show called Craft East and your studio's show at our George Fry Gallery. Your solid foundation will allow you to continue to being creative and exploratory after you graduate. Most graduates of this program go to open their own studios. Some do go to work for other companies. The next program is fashion. Have you got a passion for fashion? Great, because that's all you need. We teach you all the skills necessary, including learning to sew on domestic and professional machines, pattern drafting, garment construction, pattern development, fashion illustration, and making corsets amongst others. We have a community call for live models, and we host an annual fashion event where you will debut your line. Students in year two, decide where they want to focus. Children's clothing, lingerie, costumes, menswear, tailoring, athletic wear, to name just a few. Some students have gone to work for Canadian fashion houses, the National Ballet, film, TV, alterations and tailoring shops, and having their own studios. Graphic design. This is our number one program. It's very competitive and it fills up fast every year. Now with the pandemic, everyone, every business and institutions have gone online. You will learn how to use your computer and software to create books, labels, signs, posters, websites, transfers, and even printing on textiles for logos and images. MBCCD also teaches you how to work on drawing tablets. We have a workroom with printers, mat cutters, and other equipment related to graphic design, you will choose between illustrations and design streams. During your second year, there's a chance to have a work practicum with local businesses. In the past, most of our students have been hired before they even graduate. Jewelry Metal Arts. Have you ever strung jewelry or made some beaded pieces? That's great. Jewelry Metal Arts is your next logical step. You will be coming into a metal studio to learn tools, equipment, techniques like hammering, forging, sawing, and soldering. We even introduce you to lapidary, which is slabbing, cutting, and polishing your own stones for your own jewelry. In second year, you will explore silversmithing, which is the making of goblets, vessels, flatware, or cutlery, and even knife making. As with all our programs, drawing, rendering, illustrations, and working with clients is crucial. Your entrepreneurship studies and practices will help you understand how and where you will fit into the retail, wholesale, and commission marketplace. Start up your own studio work for a company, become a gallery artist, or become an educator, you decide. 
Photography and videography. A few years ago, studies showed that photography videography was going to become a highly sought after job in the marketplace. As the pandemic has pushed the entire world online, NBCCD has responded. You will learn analog, which is film, darkroom techniques, digital and video with state-of-the-art technology, software, equipment, lighting studio, and receive real-life practice both on-site and out in the community. For post-production, Photoshop, Lightroom, and other software applications are equally as important as your camera skills. We will help you choose your best equipment as you decide in your second year of the program what you're going to specialize in. Practicums are also available to students with consultation of your instructors. Textile design. Textile making is a centuries old tradition that has been undergoing a revival in homes and businesses across the world. We teach both traditional and contemporary techniques. Weaving and knitting are two main streams that you will choose from after your first semester. You will also learn dyeing with chemical and natural dyes, spinning, weaving, felting, and screen printing. Textile Designs now has computer assisted programming in both weaving and knitting. You will take part in the annual craft show and sale, gallery opportunities, exhibitions, and markets. Entrepreneurship is always a priority so that you can establish your own studio, work with a mill, factory, or business. You might develop and sell your own patterns or do commissions for clients. Our aim is for you to have the skills to be as successful as possible upon graduation. Wabanaki Visual Arts. MBCCD creates a safe, warm, and accepting community for First Nations students to learn, expand, and build upon their own traditions, heritage, sacred arts, and learning while connecting with the program and community. We are the only program in Canada that focuses on Wabanaki traditional craft mediums. Quill work, beading, wood carving, wampum, basketry, pottery, and even some language skills are explored. Exploration and discussions of cultural appropriation and sustainable harvesting are important. Wollastiki Grand Chief Ron Tremblay is NBCCD's elder in residence and available for consultation with all students by appointment. Students work with artists in house on field trips and are immersed in local First Nations history. Student services is very important for NBCCD. This is going to be talked about in our second hour. We have many support services, including a full-time counselor, a learning specialist, mentors, two different food programs. We have lunch and learns for having some fun and letting off some steam, a learning commons, and so much more. NBCCD truly supports and nurtures you while you learn. MBCCD is in the heart of downtown Fredericton, and Juan Diego, my colleague, was an international student and newcomer to Fredericton. He is going to introduce you to our wonderful little city. Thank you so much, Juan. Perfect. Thank you so much, Trudy. And yes, that's right. Uh, I was an international student. I came here to Fredericton about five years ago or so, and uh, there are many things that caught my attention about Fredericton. And the first one definitely has to be that much like the community that we have here at NBCCD, Ferrington also has a tight knit and diverse community. I've been able to meet people from many different backgrounds in the city. And thanks to that, I've been able to make friends from all over the world, learn new languages, uh, learn about their culture and just overall making amazing memories that I have like close to my heart. Uh, another thing is that being the capital city of New Brunswick, Fredericton is the perfect combination of a big city and a small town. And what do I mean by this? So basically, Fredericton, uh, you can find the services you would normally find on a big city, but it doesn't lose that warm and quiet atmosphere that you get from a smaller town. So instead of having to pick between a big city or a small town to come for your studies, you actually get both uh, in a single place, no need to pick. It is also a very safe place to be in with multiple places being at a walking distance from each other. And that is especially the case from campus, but more on that in a bit. And well, in case you don't feel like walking, 
you can always take the bus. And most places are within a 10 minute bus ride. So you're not really gonna be a whole lot of time sitting in a bus just to get from point A to point B. Now, due to the vibrant art scene in Fredericton, the city is actually considered as a cultural capital here in Canada. It is also considered as the number two place to live in Atlantic Canada uh, by the, sorry, by a renowned magazine just last year. There are many things that you can do. And honestly, just the life here is very much affordable as well. So rent is much more affordable compared to other cities in Canada. Uh, and transportation, just tying it back to what I just mentioned, places being very close together, it's not really much of a cost compared to other cities, which is definitely an advantage if you're a student. Now, another important thing is that Fredericton gets all four seasons of the year. And this is more so for the international audience. I actually come from Guayaquil, Ecuador, and we really don't have winter. We only have rainy season and dry season. It's very much summer uh, or like as the tropical like weather all year round. So I actually got to experience winter for the first time when I came here and it was very much magical. So the way I like to describe all four seasons uh, in relation to Fredericton is that the city looks beautiful uh, all year round, but in four different ways. And regardless of the season, there are multiple things that you can do uh, throughout the year, right? So there are plenty of outdoor activities. You, there's actually plenty of parks, outdoor trails, and there's also uh, many outdoor spaces surrounding campus even. Uh, in case you don't want to do outdoor stuff, you also have an amazing restaurant and mentioning like just a diverse community. There's food from all over the world in a single place. I've tried food from South Asia, East Asia, uh, other Latin American countries, uh, as well as uh, some European food as well. And it's just delicious. There's also many events and festivals going uh, around like in the city, especially during the summer and the fall. And in case you don't want to do any of that, you can also do, you can watch movies at a cinema and one of the buses takes you directly to an entertainment center where you can play bowling. There's an arcade. And my personal favorite, there's also a laser tag. So that's actually pretty cool. There are also multiple art galleries uh, around the city, especially in the downtown area. So you can just event, uh, you can just like uh, visit the markets, visit the galleries. And based on the entrepreneurial curriculum that Trudy actually mentioned, uh, chances are you're going to be participating in some of these, which is amazing. But enough about that. How about I actually show you around what Fredericton looks like. So it's going to take you right here to the walking bridge. So this is uh, one of the pictures you might have seen it in the Fredericton side. So the city itself is divided between north side and south side by the Wollastook or also known as the St. John River. And this is the bridge that you will take in case you want to cross it by walking. Uh, it's a very beautiful place. Uh, I've taken plenty of pictures. This is what it looks like during the winter. And it's just one of the more popular uh, uh, attractions here in Fredericton, especially around summertime. Uh, it's a very like nice place just to walk around and uh, spend time with your friends. It's a very, very neat place. And now I'm gonna, just gonna jump to Carlton Street and Queen Street. So this is actually what downtown looks like. Over here, you're gonna see campus. I'm gonna show it to you in a bit, but I'm just gonna turn around real quick. And in here, you can actually see the river. There's also a bridge where you can get closer, but unfortunately, like this is as far as I can go. Uh, Google Maps doesn't allow me to get like on the bridge. Um, here is the public library. And as you can see, here is our beautiful campus. So here's the barracks building. And here is the main arts building. Uh, as you can see, very much campus is not only like in the heart of Fredericton, it's the, in the heart of downtown Fredericton. So it's like in the heart of the heart, very much centric, but uh, everything is pretty much next to it. 
the library, you got the river. And in here, we're just gonna take a quick stroll down uh, Queen Street. You get multiple different stores, restaurants. Uh, here is actually one of the bus stops uh, that you can like, just like use the bus as soon as you go out of class or as soon as you need to get to campus, the bus just stops right there. You get uh, a brunch place. This is uh, one of my favorite places to like uh, eat at. It's very delicious. I've had like plenty of good memories in this place. Multiple restaurants. There's also banks. Here's the, actually the, the justice building is just up ahead right here. And here is Service New Brunswick. So this is where uh, you actually, you would go to pay your tuition. Uh, if you need a driver's license, this is the place to go. Or if you need like a provincial ID, this is the place to go. And you can also uh, like, if you need uh, the Medicare, so that would be like the provincial medic card. This is also the, the, the place where you would go. So just so you know, very much, pretty much in front of campus, no need to, uh, drive around or walk around for like extended periods of time. It's just a matter of crossing the street and that's it. There's a board game cafe. Uh, you go there, you have delicious food and play all the board games that are available right there. Uh, and in here, we're just gonna show you the George Fry Gallery. So this is also, as you saw in the video, part of campus. And Trudy is actually gonna talk to you a little bit about it. So. Trudy, take it away. Thank you very much, Juan Diego. I really enjoyed that little walk down Queen Street. Please remember that Queen Street, which we are located on, is one of two maintain two downtown main streets that make up the, the downtown core. So the George Fry Gallery is the New Brunswick College of Craft and Design Gallery. Um, it is essential to our uh, teaching and to our learning environment. And it's right across the street from our campus, just kind of a little bit kitty corner. It's a teaching and experiential gallery that is really essential to our college. And I want to introduce you to Karen Rue. She is our gallery coordinator and manager. Karen, please tell us more about the gallery. Hello. I'm Karen Rue, and I'm the George Fry Gallery Coordinator and an instructor in the Photography Videography Program. I've been working at the college's gallery since 2005. The George Fry Gallery shows all that our students have accomplished in their years at the college. It bridges the gap between learning your trade as a student and becoming a successful professional artist. It incorporates all the skills you have been taught not only in the work you create to display, but also in the way you present and talk about the work in both written artist statements and in person. As an artist, craftsperson and designer, having your work displayed in the gallery for the public to see is crucial and your inclusion in a gallery show on your resume or CV is vital to building your credibility as an artist. If you want to get more work, it is critical that you have your work out there in the world where people can see it and become familiar with who you are and what you are doing. Having an exhibition gives artists and designers a chance to share work with people who might not otherwise be engaging with their media. It also gives students an opportunity to see how their work is being perceived by their peers, the overall college community, and the public. Having an exhibition is a big step out of the studio and into the public domain. We consider our gallery to be an incubator gallery. It is safe and comfortable and a place where all students can learn how to confidently exhibit their work. Even before the work is brought to the space, students are involved in every aspect of gallery planning and often plan their pieces to a theme picked out for the exhibition by the studio. Students learn how to critique and improve their work, label print, and have the work juried within their studios. Students write biographies and artist statements to accompany the work and pack it for travel. They learn how to physically repair and prepare the gallery space before their work ever arrives. When the work does arrive, the task of laying it out begins. When we set up an exhibit, students take color, flow, and the viewer's experience into consideration. 
Students are expected to professionally prepare their work for hanging and display and provide necessary documentation about their work, not only for the purpose of educating the visiting public, but also for publicity purposes. Students are expected to have professional biographies, artist statements, and images of their work that the gallery can use to promote them and their pieces. We carefully measure walls, evenly spacing out works for two-dimensional pieces, and create a story on the floor that speaks to the works on the walls when three-dimensional works are included. The front windows are prepared as an intriguing glimpse into the entire show to showcase certain pieces and entice the public to enter. Each studio and its students are given a chance to plan, organize, and showcase the work of their program every two years. Not only is this a teaching, demonstrating moment for all the students within NBCCD, but it serves as an important demonstration of the caliber, progression, and learning outcomes of each studio. The students get to physically see their own work displayed with their peers, get extremely valuable feedback from the public, and gain confidence about their work. Every November, second year students are involved in an annual holiday craft show and sale. They work with their instructors and create a product line and marketing material to go with their work. Students learn about inventory, retail merchandising, working as a member of a sales team, speaking to customers, making sales, and following up with after-sales customer relations. This experience gives MBCCD students an advantage after graduation. They already know the process and preparation involved with craft sales and exhibitions, and are able to bring that experience with them as a newly established artist. The George Fry Gallery helps to complete each student's learning experience, providing them with their first official gallery experience and also easing them into the community. It demystifies the gallery experience. It helps our students gain experience and confidence in approaching other galleries and applying to other exhibitions because they know what to expect of themselves and their work. MBCCD prides itself on its entrepreneurial focus. This is all part of enabling creative learners to have sustainable careers. Student exhibitions not only enhance the learning environment for our students and inspires them, but can give the public a chance to see work they might never have had the chance to see before. As an artist, it is important to know how your work fits into the local, provincial, national, and international art scene. Through the George Fry Gallery, MBCCD not only supports our own student population, but contributes to the artistic, culture, and community of the city of Fredericton. And that helped Fredericton to be chosen as a cultural capital of Atlantic Canada. The George Fry Gallery was named in honor of an incredible artist and one of the directors of NBCCD, George Fry. This amazing man helped to build and shape the very foundations of NBCCD. George would be delighted to see the NBCCD student work and development as artists. Please follow us on social media and visit us virtually or physically. We have a new exhibition almost every month that showcases our students' amazing work. Thank you so much, Karen. We appreciate your time today and joining us. Um, so thank you and enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we hope thank that you all were able to learn more about the George Fry Gallery, which um, we're so fortunate to have as part of our community here at the college. So with that, we're actually gonna head into a quick stretch break so everyone can um, get some water, use the washroom, whatever you'd like to do, just move your body a little bit. We'll take about five minutes. In that time, we are going to play a video and we're very excited about this video because no one has seen it before. Um, so you're the first audience to get to watch it. And it's part of our Design Your Life video series that is going to be released throughout the spring. Um, so we have alumni who um, met with us and shared their stories about how they were able to use the skills and experience that they had gained at MBCCD to design a life that um, 
you know, combined their passions, their career goals, and um, made them the happiest that they could be. So we're going to play that as we go into the break, and we'll see you back in five minutes. Hi, my name is Anna Mathis, and I studied the Foundation Visual Arts program as well as the Textiles Diploma program at NBCCD between about 2011 and 2014. I've designed a life where self-sufficiency is reflected in my everyday. Textiles was really the start for me. I wanted to be able to design cloth. I wanted to know where my products came from right from the very beginning. And that's just permeated into everything that I do. I want to start at the beginning. I want to start in the soil. In my current practice, I'm doing a lot more making for myself, for neighbors, for friends. I do a lot of sewing and um, fiber arts, but I also do a lot of homemaking and homesteading crafts, like I create salves and tinctures, and so I, I do a lot of growing my own vegetables, um, keeping chickens, keeping bees for honey and wax. In my work, I'm the Instructional Designer and Opportunities Coordinator at NBCCD, and I work with faculty with curriculum, and I also sort of run our auxiliary programming. I use what I learned at NBCCD absolutely every day. I've designed a life where I think about designing constantly. Whether I'm creating something at home um, to be given away or to be sold, or whether I'm at work creating forms or policies, I am, I'm thinking about visual communication, I'm thinking about um, problem solving and creativity and communicating to a large audience, and all of those things are, are a part of good design. I realized that what it all comes down to, the core, why I went into textiles in the first place, is my interest in self-sufficiency. But I'm so, I'm so passionate about keeping alive this knowledge that I fear could be lost. And so weaving and spinning yarn was the spark of that, but it's really woven its way into my life in absolutely every area. Welcome back, everyone. Um, we hope that you enjoyed stepping into Anna's magical world. Um, it is winter here in Canada, so seeing those beautiful images of green grass and flowers and vegetables growing um, certainly is making me miss summertime and our beautiful spring uh, season. So we are now um, going to move into the parts of the webinar that I think a lot of you are looking forward to the most, where we actually get to hear directly from current students and alumni. So I am going to invite um, four of our current students to join me on screen. Um, they are in different programs and have come from um, different places, um, to MBCCD, so I think you're going to find it very valuable to hear hear from them all. Um, so, um, so before we begin that, I do just want to reiterate um, the availability of student services. So we have an abundant um, number of services on our campus. So this includes um, mental health and wellness. It includes our student life office, which does programming with our current students. Um, or who's on screen now is one of our campus tour guides. So we have a tour program for anyone that wants to come visit. Erica, you can come back. <laughs> you guys are all welcome to pop on. Um, and we have a learning strategist um, on campus who helps with study habits. Um, and if you need any accommodations in the classroom, um, we also have a, um, a designer on campus who works with faculty members who helps um, put those accommodations and supports into practice. So there's so many different people working around the clock to help make the student experience what it is. Um, but I think what's most valuable is hearing directly from our students themselves. So I'm going to allow the students to um, introduce themselves. We'll have Erica go first, followed by Kaylee or and Bella. So take it away, Erica. 
Hi everyone, I'm in the second year Jewelry and Metal Arts Diploma Program. And I actually started my journey with MBCCD at the St. John FBA program, which they have just as many amazing instructors down there as they do right in Fredericton. It was a wonderful experience there. Hi, my name is Haley Craig. I'm in the ceramics program um, and I'm in my second year here. Hi, I'm Orr and I'm in my foundation visual arts program. I'm soon about to finish it and go into my first year of photography and videography program. Hey there, uh, I'm Bella Basque. Um, I'm actually in my fourth year at the school, but I am a second year digital media student. Now we uh, call it the 3D digital media program. Awesome. Thank you all. Um, fantastic. So yeah, so we're joined with quite a diverse group of students, which is awesome. They're all in different programs and have had different experiences. Um, and as you've gotten to hear, um, there is a lot of learning going on at the college. Um, so why don't we get started um, with just um, one of the big questions that I can see is, why did you choose NBCCD? Why, what made you become a student here? Um, and Or why don't we have you start? So um, as you all know, I am in the Foundation Visual Arts, which is the program that you take, that is recommended to take before you apply to any diploma program, because you really get the tools that you will need to apply in those diploma programs. And I find that NBCCD is such a small community we have a, like, it, it's a giant school, but everyone knows everybody and everyone is there to help you. And everyone is so passionate and excited about art that it's just so much fun. It feels like family and you're like, it, you make such close friends that, that that's the reason I chose NBCD. Thank you. And how about from some of our students who are further along in their programs um, or still in her first year? So it's great to hear that perspective. Um, would any of you, yeah, Erica, um, why did you choose NBCCD? Well, I've always wanted to go to NBCCD because I've just always been in love with creating, but I actually didn't apply until I was 27 and my children were already into public school. And I decided I needed to create a life where I can create from home and raise my children at the same time. So choosing a path where I can be a fully self-sufficient entrepreneur is where I wanted to go. And NBCCD is helping provide that for me with our inclusive business programs and even just our publicity opportunities and networking opportunities that are provided to us just from being a student at NBCCD is very well putting me on the path towards that. And also with our Christmas craft show, it gives us an experience of what it's like to be in the real world like that. And it lets you know that you can actually sustain a life with your creations. It's wonderful. Yeah, that's so cool to hear. And that's an experience we hear a lot from people, you know, um, it's not always um, the first step that you take, you come to it. Um, so we have a lot of students that um, have been on different journeys and now we're at the college. So it's so exciting to see that. And that just enhances the creativity, um, having different perspectives and experiences. Kaylee and Bella, um, uh, how was, how did you end up here? Kaylee, why don't you, why don't you start? Yeah, so I'm from Fredericton. Um, I've always been an artistic and creative person in general. Um, my whole life, I actually knew about NBCCD. Um, family friends worked at um, NBCCD, kind of always been around it. Summertime barrack times, like the craft sales and everything going on there. So eventually it was just kind of meant to go there. So yeah, it was a great opportunity opportunity starting off at the FBA program the uh, visual uh, sorry foundation visual arts program and uh, it really made it available where you could meet people and be social and uh, just feel comfortable like at the very beginning and then get to choose which career you kind of wanted to go towards so yeah uh, for me, uh, it's been quite the journey, actually. After graduating high school, I did a full year university, realized it wasn't for me. And my mother, who actually graduated from the Jewelry Metal Arts program here at NBCCD, she 
had taken my brother and I to an open house and I completely fell in love with the VR program. I wanted to know everything about it. So I applied, I fell in love with textiles while I was in foundation visual arts, did a year of that. And now here I am two years later and I'm about to graduate from my 3D digital media program. Again, that's we're the last ones graduating under that title. We are now the 3D digital design program. Um, and I hope to continue more years here. Um, I'd like to complete another program uh, in the graphic design. So just trying to wrap up my full toolbox, as we like to say over here. That's awesome. Um, and Bella, that's a perfect um, kind of segue because we actually did get a question from the audience um, asking if you can take more than one diploma program at the college. Um, and would this mean an extra two years? Um, how does that work? So yes, you would return for two years because it is, you're fully immersed in your studies. Um, our students are in class Monday to Friday, all day. Um, it's, you know, two years of learning that um, is condensed, but you learn a lot. So you, it goes by fast, <laughs> um, but we do see a lot of students will take one program and then they'll come back and do another program. Um, so it's whatever your interests are. We also have an advanced studio practice certificate year. Um, and this is for students who are looking for um, a much more, um, like focused year to advance their their practice and their studio. Um, and Eric, I wonder if you have um, some some experience or or, um, or sorry, insight into the advanced studio practice or know some people doing it. Um, I know we get a lot of jewelry metal arts students that will often take it. So what are your thoughts on ASP? I think it is a really valuable program. Uh, we do have quite a few jewelry students who do take it, and if you are a jewelry student who takes it, we do have a room that is provided just for the advanced studio practice jewelry students in addition to their business courses. So with, that's really great, and they also give them opportunities to uh, figure out what they want to do kind of thing, and they can direct their program for that, whether they want to go into business for themselves or if they're looking to work under a different jeweler or anything like that. It's really great. I do know uh, Jody Haley. I hope she doesn't mind me mentioning her name. She did really well with the uh, ASP program, and now she has come back as a uh, half teacher, half student kind of thing at the college. She helps up put on workshops and works with our first year students, which is wonderful. And we also do have in the jewelry studio a computer aided design component. So she has I don't wanna say monopolized, but uh, she's done really well with that, with designing her 3D skulls. And we do have a lot of other students in our second year program who are doing wonderful things with the 3D design for jewelry as well. It's very cool. Wonderful. While we have you, Erica, um, someone actually asked a question specifically for you asking um, that you mentioned taking FBA in St. John. So they, they want to know, do you feel like you got the full experience? Did you ever travel to Fredericton, to the main campus? What does it look like being in St. John? Uh, in St. John, all of our design programs and history programs and writing programs are exactly the same, just from different instructors but they are also well-educated and well-immersed into their uh, career. Huh. So you get just as much everything from there and it's right at the St. John Arts Campus, St. John Arts Center campus. So you get acquainted with the Arts Center folks as well, which is nice. And there are some students in the St. John FEA who travel up to Fredericton for their media studies. And there are some who don't. I personally don't drive, so I stayed in St. John. And we had just as much fun down there, just as much learning experiences. It's wonderful. You get to meet a whole different slew of uh, uh, colleagues, I would say, and networking. So it's wonderful. You kind of have both cities at your fingertips this way. Yeah, absolutely. And so anyone um, that, you know, is is not familiar with New Brunswick, um, we do have our main campus here in Fredericton, which is the capital city of the province, New Brunswick. Um, and we have that's where our 
our main campuses. And then our foundation visual arts here, although we have um, it here in Fredericton, we also have an online opportunity for foundation visual arts. That was brand new this year um, and it's going so well. The students are loving it. Um, so that will continue. And you can actually take that year online. Um, and then we have um, foundation visual arts in St. John as Erica just talked about. Um, both St. John and Fredericton are very vibrant cities, um, big arts and cultural love and um, scenes there. Um, so you just heard a little bit about St. John's. Um, maybe we can get Kaylee to talk a little bit about Fredericton since she's from this city. Yeah, FBA was actually my favorite. I shouldn't say that because ceramics is really my passion, but FBA like really starts you off like meeting people like I was saying before um learning who the instructors are I mean it's it's overall the school is a community um we're like a family almost like you want to be there um the nice thing about FEA is that it has so many activities that, like student association put on so much for the students to feel welcome and also just like we have activities such as like open houses, um, the um, coffee, um, we used to do a coffee house, um, which hopefully with COVID calming down, we will be able to start doing those things again. But um, we go on tours around downtown. Uh, we had a hockey thing term, like a tournament that we do ball hockey outside. Uh, so little things like that when I first started FVA that really like engage, like Halloween is a huge thing. We do um, uh, haunted houses for each, um, each uh, studio and uh, we have like a little dance and costume competition. So like things like that is really nice, but also the material that you learn is so important, I find, to just get that foundation of art and um, just understanding how things work um, from 3D design, 2D design, color study, history, like all of it is so intriguing and gives you a really good fundamental aspect to how art's supposed to work. And following that, you use all those to continue that in the career that you want to do, um, whatever studio you end up picking. And they all, um, all the things you learn in FEA, I find is like very important. Like you always come back to those fundamental things that you learn in FEA. So I definitely would suggest it to anybody, even if they wanted to just start off into a studio, that the foundation program is one of the best I've found for that. Yeah, Foundation Visual Arts, um, that is the year that is, um, it's one required for most students entering. Um, you really have to demonstrate, the only way to not take FBA and go right into a, into a, into a diploma program, which is what we call our direct entry application, um, is to demonstrate the equivalent knowledge and experience of what you would gain in Foundation Visual Arts. So even if you wanted to apply right now into fashion design, um, having a, a full experience and knowledge of fashion design actually is not sufficient. You need to demonstrate knowledge of the foundational year that we offer um, in order to bypass foundation visual arts. So most students do enter through foundation visual arts, which is so key. Um, and as you can hear, very loved. It's a fun year, but it also teaches you all the language of design. So you know the terminology and you know how to convey um, critiques or um, convey your thoughts. You learn how to draw, um, which is often a, a much appreciated class um, or various classes and to learn how to take your how to mock up your designs from 2D and then turn them into 3D. Um, and I think, or in your foundation visual arts class, you guys have been working on that 2D to 3D recently. Can you tell us a bit about that project and what you're learning? Yeah, so um, we had two projects that we are now completing at this point. We were supposed to have three, but COVID kind of messed us up and we kind of moved to online. Um, so our first one was um, a wire project where we had a theme for our class, ours was Studio Ghibli, and we had to, like we took the character and we actually had to 
build it from wire, like make it 3D, make it come to life. Um, it's a, a, a lot about line. What's the, like how to apply a continuous line to um, a 2D design. And now our second one is a foam core project where we had to pretty much plan a shape, repeat it, change the, change the width, change the length, change the, like the sizing in between and create some type of a symmetrical um, form. And it's very fun. I cut myself yesterday, but it was like, it was just great time. It was just, everyone is helping each other and everyone is, you, you're surrounded in the design room we are surrounded by so many cool projects and yeah so you just start on paper and you're like how am I going to get a 3d and then you see it and it's super cool that's awesome um yeah any other thoughts about foundation visual arts and and just kind of the the level playing field that it may put you on and and help you prepare to go into any of the programs um, as you heard from Bella, like she's doing 3D digital design right now, but she's thinking about maybe coming back and doing graphic design. And so no matter what program you decide to go into or um, after Foundation Visual Arts, you do get a one year certificate so you can go elsewhere. Um, a lot of students do go on and apply for other degrees or programs at other institutions or they enter the industry. So you are fully equipped in that year to have, um, as Bella mentioned, the full tool belt um, to be able to uh, create and problem solve and think for yourself as a designer. Um, we're getting actually a lot of questions about Fredericton and housing. Um, so those are great questions. We, we don't have dormitories at our college. Um, so we're right snack in downtown Fredericton, which is so fun um, and has many opportunities. But um, yeah, we don't do residence halls here. If you did really want that residence dormitory experience, we do partner with a local university um, where you could actually live in their residence halls. So that is an option and you can reach out if you're interested. But most of our students live in houses or apartments. Um, and so maybe you guys can help answer some of these questions. We have a couple of questions about what is student housing like around the school? What are the average costs? Is it difficult to find? Um, anyone wanna take a first stab at answering some of those questions? Yeah, Erica, why don't you go ahead? I do know that most of our students, well, some of them, uh, will live as roommates in apartments downtown, which actually really helps on the cost of rent and living in general. Uh, if you have kids, it is hard to find apartments in Fredericton. So if you're looking for next year, start looking now. But there is availabilities. You just got to find them. And it's no more expensive than anywhere else. I find housing costs are pretty much general across the province right now and on par with just about every else except for like the major cities kind of thing. Yeah, great. And that's a good note. Um, because we are such a college town, there are two universities, there's colleges, there's different schools here. Um, it's very much a college town. So in terms of rent, um, on average across Canada, Fredericton is actually a very um, cost effective city to live in. The cost of living um, is quite low in comparison, particularly to larger cities like Montreal or Toronto, you're going to find that your rent is a fraction of the cost from those cities. Um, and we also have a really high quality of life here. Um, we actually have the fifth bluest skies in all of Canada. So um, that means even in the winter, it's not all just gray and clouds. We have a lot of sunny days. Today actually is a bright blue sunny day. Um, so we're really fortunate to have that nature um, within our small, charming little city. Um, and with being in a smaller city as well comes um, safety. So I always found Fredericton very safe and comfortable and um, very focused around community. Um, yeah, Bella, what was your experience like with Fredericton, community, safety, housing? Um, well, I've actually had a nice uh, mix of living. I've also I've lived across the river uh, for the first few years. I now live thankfully downtown where everything is walking distance. It's honestly such a great experience. Um, I love the walking trails out here and again like 
on days like this, I can't wait to go back outdoors and just get some fresh air. Um, it, having the Community Food Smart program connections through the school is honestly a great way to save money on produce too. Um, and you know, if it's someone, if you can't walk it, if it's too far, you can always take the bus or someone might be able to like drive you. Like again, it's such a small community, like there will be help around. Um, I, I started living in this area and my first little bit was a little stressful, just like moving to a new town. But as soon as I like, you know, connected and found my people and I really settled right into the city and having everything so close really does make it that much easier to get around. Yeah, that's awesome. And all of our students actually have free bus access around the city. Um, so that's one of the benefits of being an NBCCD student. You can take all the city transit for free. Um, so even if um, Bella mentioned living across the river, there's a huge river that splits our city in two. Um, and it's the Wollastook or the St. John River. Um, and it's incredibly beautiful. There's two bridges that drive across it. And then there's actually a big walking bridge, which um, is what Juan Diego showed you. It was really snowy, so it might have been a little tricky to see, but um, that beautiful big walking bridge, which used to be a train bridge, um, so it's quite large, is now just for pedestrian use. And there's over 113 kilometers of walking trails that connect all throughout the city. So if you bike or skateboard or rollerblade, you can take those trails. Most of them are paved, um, so you can get around the city quite easily. Um, however, you can also take the buses and those run um, regularly and they stop right outside campus um, and the main bus terminal is actually one kind of street over from the campus as well. So if you want to get anywhere, you can just pop right over there and, and catch the bus. Um, if you have additional questions about living in Fredericton, um, support for finding apartments, you can absolutely reach out to my team um, in the recruitment office and I'll I'll throw our email address in there as another reminder um, for you. So it's nbccdrecruiting at gmb.ca. Um, so that's in the chat. And my team can send you some of the most common resources that students use to search for housing availability and apartments. Um, Erica gave a good tip to start looking now if you're planning to come this fall, especially if you have children or if you want to bring a pet with you. Um, you'll definitely want to search for those pet friendly um, or accommodating uh, housing options now so you can sign a lease. Um, most students being in a college city, you know, they know they're returning in the fall. So this is the time and then through the spring that they start booking apartments for the fall. Um, so great questions. Thank you all so much for asking um, these great questions about the city. Uh, this is coming back to programs. And I think this is something that a lot of our students worry about before they come to NBCCD. Um, they see the work that you all are producing and it's so impressive and high quality. And they think, oh my gosh, I'm not at that level how can I possibly apply here? Um, we get this question all the time. So were any of you, did you have that nervousness or were you intimidated before applying? Um, and in particular, someone's asking, you know, I'm scared that I won't be able to um, be successful in fashion. I'm, I don't have a competitive nature. Um, so what would you tell them about, you know, once they get here, how they'll be empowered and the skills they'll gain to, to get to those places. Um, does anyone want to start us off maybe, or? So uh, for me, especially because I'm in foundation visual arts, it was definitely a little nerve wracking. Like, what am I going to, how am I? And then we have, we apply for the next step and we're like, am I going to be enough? Is what I'm required to perform enough? But you, literally the second day you're reassured that, that you are enough because they're not and that's one thing that my instructor told me and I felt so like it's still going with me it was I'm not um grading grading you comparing to your classmates I'm grading you for how your process was so 
how I started and how I'm doing right now because I'm in my second semester. And when I started drawing, I didn't, I probably did figure sticks. Like that's what I did, like the very simple drawing, like not that advanced. And now we're doing bodies, we're doing human figures. And I'm, I'm, I'm not perfect, I'm not Picasso, but I know what I'm doing and I know how to look at things and apply what I'm told about uh, value or light and things like that. So, and actually, to be honest, we talked, me and my friends talked because we all applied and a lot of us got accepted to the programs next year. And we just realized how much this is not a competition. Like I know you might see art schools in movies and things like that. And you're like, oh my goodness, like all the competition, how good they are. And, but it's, it's not that you are not compared to anybody. You're doing your own thing. You learn what you can bring and what you're good at. And it's actually like you get more inspired by your friends rather than feeling intimidated or in a competition. Yeah, Bella, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I want, I want to add on to the yes, it's not a competition. Um, I I feel that so wholeheartedly, even just going from like FEA, seeing the vast different kinds of students all together in one room, like everyone's learning the same thing, but every single person based on like where they came from and how they were brought up, like it changes the work drastically. And it's such an inspiring thing to see how different everyone's creation process can be. Um, it totally was nerve wracking like making that decision to come to this school. But I, I think that once you find out that what you're passionate about and if you start chasing that, it's the most rewarding process just to learn about it and to share that with everyone else. And this school really does give you that opportunity to chase those dreams. And it, it's such a great experience. That's so awesome to hear. And Erica, as, as you mentioned, you know, you you came to NBCCD in your late 20s after having a career and deciding, you know, like, this is what I want to do. So what was that like for you? Uh, it was really awesome, actually. It's kind of like I fell into what I knew was right for me kind of thing. It's like where my heart belongs is where I'm creating, which is wonderful. Uh, NBCCD really gives you that and pushes you in the direction you want to be in and like everyone said it's not a competition it's really nice there's some people when you sit there they're like oh i'm not as good as someone else blah 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 but that's not the case when you're looking at their work kind of thing everybody's always the hardest critic on themselves but we all get exactly the same direction and you just start by making marks and going from there it's really great that's fantastic. Um, and we have just a couple more minutes left. So if you have any final questions, please submit them now. Um, but we do have a, a question for Kaylee about um, ceramics and the entrepreneurial learning components um, that are part of your courses um, and being able to sell your work. I actually own one of Kaylee's mugs <laughs> that I bought at the Christmas craft sale. Um, and I love it. It's so cool. So maybe Kaylee can tell us a little bit about what it's been like um, kind of establishing yourself as a working artist and being able to sell your craft. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the school is great for that. Um, instructors totally help you with courses such as the business course, uh, production course. So it gets you prepared to actually develop your line, develop actually like with craft sale production course and the business course all together. It was pushed us out into the world to really know what was expected. Um, the pressure that was needed to schedule everything out, how much we were to put out there, um, but also gave us the opportunity of what is liked, what is wanted. Um, so it's a wonderful opportunity. The business course also like goes down from budgeting to understanding like your studio space, what equipment is needed. So it breaks it down even to allow you to realize what your goals are. Uh, and how you can achieve them. So it's not just writing down a goal and saying, oh, I'll come back to that later. Like they push us to the point that, no, these have to be realistic, that these, this isn't just 
a dream. This is actually what you want to do. So a lot of it is very self-motivating. You have to be wanting to do this as well. As much as teachers will help you the whole way, you really like have to want to do it. Um, so that comes with a lot of work as well. Um, with competition, I mean, self-confidence. Um, if you want to be a if you want to do the things, you, you'll be out there. You'll do that. So just help you whole way. They will help you make resumes. They'll help you apply for residencies. So the, yeah, in the ceramic studio, they like creating um, that. So fantastic! Thank you all so much. Um, I'm just checking for any final questions that are coming in um, that we can take to the group. But otherwise, um, you know, a question that we always love to just wrap up on um, is what is your advice for our audience for um, potential future students? What would what would you have wished you had known or what would you like to say to them today? Who would like to start? Yeah, Kaylee, go ahead. Uh, again, like Erica, I started when I was in my late 20s um, because I sat around working at a Dairy Queen for 12 years thinking, oh, this won't be the thing to do. So I would say, just do it. Like if if you're going to fail, you're going to fail, but you're, you won't know until you do it. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, move on. But I think that's the worst thing to do is to question yourself for so long and to just jump into doing something that you really feel passionate about and you might turn around like us where you're actually going out to the world doing something you love. That's great advice. Absolutely. Yeah. Or. Um, so for me, especially it's just be open-minded when you come here. Um, some things I have friends that have a little more knowledge than I do and they know some things that we already learned about and some situations look really stressful and some tears come out and some it, it it is a process, especially in your foundation program. So give it a try. It's it's gonna be hard. It's not the easiest because you get there's so much information in one year, right? You know, all the foundation stuff that you need to know, but it is so rewarding at the end, especially when you end up meeting people, uh, getting to know the instructors so well and uh, getting into the diploma programs and it's it's a process but it's so worth it that it even those hard moments you don't remember them because two seconds later you laugh about it and somebody is there to give you a hand to complete it the situation like fill figure it out the situation so it's just as Kaylee said like do it it's so much fun absolutely Erica any advice for our our audience members today I was gonna say the same thing, just do it. If you know it's what you wanna do with your life, just do it, no matter what anybody else tells you, like, oh, you can't make a career in the arts, you're never gonna have enough money to survive off of, blah, blah, blah. It's just because they don't know the possibilities and opportunities that are out there for us. So just do it. What's the worst thing that could happen? Yeah, it's honestly like echoing it. I mean, all you have to do is start somewhere. And if you, don't know where to start, I think NBCCD is the perfect place to find it, especially with the wide selection that we have. Um, my best advice would be just give in to the possibilities and see where it takes you. Awesome, that's excellent advice. Um, that's so good. And while you guys were talking, we got some quick last minute questions. So we do have a minute. So I will let us just quickly answer these um, and maybe I'll just answer them as well real quick. I don't think I can answer this one though. How much time do you spend on homework each day? Is it a lot? Is it spaced out? <laughs> Everyone's kind of like, oh, it depends. Depends That's on the year. Pretty much always creating in class, out of class. It's constant <laughs> way of life it's great yeah 
Yeah, honestly, homework, I don't really see it as homework, uh, especially when we're in class working on our projects and stuff when it's independent. It's playtime, um, creating anything for these um, sessions and classes. Everything is very easy and honestly, just learning how to create something differently. There's nothing better. It's a great example um playtime <laughs> because it is you know you're doing something you love and that's that's the difference um you know we always hear um if you if you do work that you love you never work a day in your life but the same is true as well when you're a student and if you're studying what you love you're going to get better grades you're going to enjoy the work you're going to put that extra effort in and see the payoff um yeah so or how with fba this year foundation visual arts what's What's homework like for you? So we do kind of have probably a little bit more homework than the diplomas. Um, so for this, the project, let's say that I gave as an example, we get, we have a week that we get the project and we have some time to work on it, learn all the information about it. Then we have next week is a work period. So we get to come, bring all the material, work in class, get our instructors feedback, everything like that. And then the last week is um, critique. So it's group critique. We bring our final uh, project and everyone kind of like talk about the process, about what was hard, what was good, what uh, give advice to each other, what we can do better. And then we start working on the next project. And it's funny because this project that we have is very cramped because we, because of COVID, we had some more wor home work time, um, but you really enjoy it. And uh, it's stressful, but you get it, you get the hang of it. Like you already know what to expect after like probably a week. So you're just like, oh, okay. Cause you have, we have quizzes in history, but at the same time we have another project for history and 3D and drawing, but it's so much fun. As Bella said, it's playtime. It's not really homework. Like you don't feel so drained. You're just having fun. You're drawing and doing cool stuff. Yeah, Kaylee, what's what's a ceramic student <laughs> homework experience? You need to know time management, <laughs> I would say. Uh, we are constantly working. Ceramics is quite a lot different, I think, from everyone's is that you could have this wonderful thing and it suddenly fails from like the very beginning or the middle, the very end. So, and then you have to start all over. So homework, um, you have to be patient, um, but it, you'll get there and instructors understand. But yeah, time management for ceramics is definitely a key. Typically we're working after hours. Some of us have worked till almost 12 o'clock at night. Like, so I think the curfew is like 11. I'm not sure how it is now, but um, weekends, like you're always in the studio as a ceramic student. Um, yeah, so. And Kaylee, um, maybe you can, paint a picture of, um, you know, before students come, they think, okay, I'm going to study in a classroom. But what do our classrooms actually look like? They're hearing us say the word studio a lot. Right. So our classroom is this, well, for ceramics, it's an open space of like, basically, like two rooms put together. Uh, one side, uh, you're dealing with all your chemicals, your glazes, so all your metals and everything to create from scratch and you have your work area where you have a surrounding room of wheels, ceramic wheels. Um, there's a big table in the middle where we all group together, discuss what we're going to work on. Um, we sometimes do critiques and yeah, so basically if you were to walk into the ceramic studio, you'd see students at each of their wheels throwing and there's a big kiln room. So we learn literally everything from scratch in those rooms. And also in the basement, there's another kind of about the same size as well. Also doing the same thing. Um, all first just around the wheels doing that. Well, thank you so much. Um, and last question is where do you get your supplies and what what's what are your school supplies for your programs? Um, maybe we'll start with Bella. Um, what do school supplies look like for a 3D student? 
Well, um, it always helps if you are someone who wants to work at home to get yourself a good laptop. I personally am using a gaming laptop because the software that we use actually handles a lot of things a lot heavier than a, a, like a MacBook would. Um, so you need something that's strong that can process a lot of information a lot. However, the school does offer its own systems for us to use individually. Uh, we all have access to the computer so that we can do work at the school during hours. Um, memory keys are very important. Always remember to save your work. Um, we always have sketchbooks handy, notebooks, anything to like keep your ideas sorted. Um, but yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of physical things that you need for a 3D program. However, in textiles, there's a lot of binders, a lot of yarn, a lot of dyes. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and someone asked if um, about the college store. Um, any of you have experience purchasing from the store? And can you tell our audience a bit about what the, what the store is here? So the store has everything we could possibly need for every single program right from FBA and every project that you receive during that, whether it's ripping up paper to cutting different types of paper or drawing on a certain type of paper or mat board. Uh, we also have a bunch of different yarns, everything that you could need for the Wabanaki visual arts as well. They have their quills and beads and all the strings down there, all the yarns and dyes for textiles. They also have all of the hammers and files we can need for uh, the jewelry program, as well as our metal that we need, which copper, brass, silver, and I'm not sure if the school has gold. I can't afford it yet myself, but <laughs> uh, there's everything in the store. And it's now open to the public as well. So you can wander on in and check out and see what we got. It's great. Great, awesome. All right, well, thank you all so much. That concludes our student panel. Um, there's still questions flying in, but unfortunately we just don't have time to get to them all today. So um, we always recommend uh, booking a in-person or a virtual campus tour with us, then we can actually have just one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, have you turn on your camera um, and microphone, and um, both Or and Bella are tour guides, so they actually offer those tours, um, but I know Erica and Kaylee and many of our other students are always happy to field any questions if you're here on a tour and popping through the studio. Um, and you want to learn a, a little bit more about their experiences. So thank you so much to Or, Erica, Kaylee, and Bella for joining us. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend and we will see you on Monday. And um, now I'm going to bring our alumni on screen so we can move into our alumni panel. So we have um, Tina and Ai Chun joining us today. And um, Ai Chun, you're welcome to hop on screen here. Hi, everybody. And Tina. Wonderful. So thank you both so much for joining me. Um, it's wonderful to hear from current students, but I know our audience members today, um, you know, they all are looking at joining us at MBCCD maybe in the future. Some have been accepted. They are starting in September. So they're so excited to not just hear from current students, but also hear from our alumni. Um, you know, we all go to school hoping to get something out of it, to, to have a job, to be able to sustain ourselves, to be happy. Um, so thank you both for joining us today. And I'll let you each introduce yourself briefly and then we can take some questions. So Ai Chun, why don't you begin? And then Tina, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, hi everyone, my name is Ai Chun Jenkins. Uh, originally I came from Taiwan and uh, I came to Canada, New Brunswick when I was 18. So that was a long time ago, I got gray hair now. So, uh, I, I, you know, came to New Brunswick and then did not expect much, but after 30 some years, I'm still here and I'm very glad, very grateful. I'm still part of the school. So yeah, nice meeting you all. Yeah, Tina, wanna go ahead? 
Yes, so uh, my name is Tina and um, I was born in Russia. I came to Canada in 2016 uh, to go to NBCCD actually. And uh, I was so happy that I found this place and uh, textile design studio was just wonderful. It exceeded my expectations. So, uh, and I'm a um, textile uh, designer, artist. Uh, I do felting and I do sewing and uh, dyeing and uh, a lot of other stuff um, around uh, fibers and fabric. Amazing. So I have two textiles pros with me here today. Um, and this is great because we actually have um, a lot of interest in our audience um, for textiles, as well as fashion. And I think um, a lot of times, you know, when people tend to be more familiar with fashion than with textile design. Um, and it's, you know, showing that fashion, the clothes that we, we drape and we make, they have you have to get the cloth <laughs> from somewhere. So that's where textile designers come in. They're the ones actually designing the cloth and patterns and textures and um, among so many other things. So um, maybe Ichan, can you tell us a bit about the world of textiles and what it encompasses? Um, back then, uh, I was uh, the student of uh, uh, cultural craft and design. Back then it's called craft school. And textile is uh, not a super popular program because everybody uh, usually they aim to be graphic designer or jeweler or uh, a potter uh, in pottery studio because everything looked just so much more, uh, you can see the result. I don't know, I just kind of visual, visually, I find probably you can, you can see a, little, a lot more happen quicker, but textile takes a lot of time the main reason I got into textile because um, I found that I liked the, the quietness of it. I liked the mindset. Um, and then back then the, the studio had uh, uh, Mrs. Susan Judah. She's uh, British. Uh, she's extremely strict. She almost remind me of my, my, um, my own culture, the, the teacher that you have to show a lot of respect and how you talk to her how you uh, represent yourself, how you represent your homework and everything. You, uh, she, she hold her standard at quite a high level. So for me, I feel like that's instant connection. Um, and then I find a lot of people think that textile is, uh, um, how to say, textile is you just make cloth and you make scarf, you make uh, wall hanging, you make carpets, but actually textile, involves, you can make so many different things once you uh, master the technique. Uh, for example, I myself, I weave, um, I weave, I'm not sure you can see well, I weave with magazines and book pages, but I'm still using the basic, the textile uh, technique I learned back in the cultural craft and design back with my teacher. So once you master all those techniques, you can let your imagination just go free and then you can weave basically with everything, anything that you can get your hands to. So it's not just yarn, not just uh, you can make anything else, um, not just uh, a, a cloth or a scarf on your neck. So as long as you come into the, the studio, come into the program with open mind, um, you will be able to create something incredible. Fantastic. And Tina, what has the, the textiles world given to you? And, and um, you talked about some of your specializations. So um, just remind us again, you know, like what, what areas of textile do you, you enjoy most? So <clears throat> uh, when I came to um, the college uh, first, I wanted to learn more about felting because that was my area of interest for like maybe six years prior. And I was mostly self-taught. So I watched some tutorials doing some very simple projects, but I already had some um, uh, education. Uh, I had a diploma of a tapestry maker from Russia. 
and I wanted to learn more. And actually, I was so fascinated in textile studios that you can do this process from very, very start from the raw fiber, like wool, or it can be like flax uh, or cotton and you can spin it you can knit it you can uh, weave with it you can felt with it and you can work with the final cloth actually that you will make uh, you can make it into some kind of like a garment or home decor or anything you can print on it because uh, we learned a lot about um, like fabric manipulations, what you can do with fabric, how you can dye it, how you can use like so-called tie dye or shibori dye, how you can print it uh, with blocks like block printing and how you can use um, uh, modern techniques. Um, like there are special printers that can print on fabric so you can print your own fabric that was just amazing and uh, i think that textile uh, studio can can teach you so much about various ways to manipulate fibers and fabric in general that you can choose something and like for for myself i cannot choose actually i have like two main areas that i still work in one is the wool felting so i uh, use raw wool to create different um objects like starting from bags and slippers to dresses and also i like to um, reuse and um refashion or reinvent um, fabrics uh, that I got from thrift store and I make new pieces like dresses or pants, uh, just combining different fabrics, adding some dyes and that's, that's a whole different story. So I like uh, that textile is so diverse and you can watch the whole process from the very uh, beginning, like from the sheep, for example, to the final project. It's it's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. And I think that's something that, you know, we hear from time and time again um, from textiles graduates in particular is just like how much you can do <laughs> in, in textiles. And I know, um, Ichan, you specialize in um, hand-woven uh, paper art with recycled materials. Um, and for our audience, Ichan's work has been displayed all over the world. Um, so it's quite impressive. And, and you've been flown to San Francisco, I heard, to, to, uh, um, to exhibit and, and speak with people there. And so what have those experiences been like? Um, and just, you know, what what that process has been for you. Um, back to the conversation with the, the current student, they were just saying that um, everybody all have that question in their head, um, where to go from here? Once I learn the basic technique or once I learn the technique, where, where do I go from here to, you know, to expand? Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's not easy. It is pretty difficult, but I find, um, and then especially each one of us, we're different. I'm not a really aggressive person, but you got to tell yourself that, ask yourself how bad you want this career to, to succeed, how, uh, how much um, you want uh, to stay, uh, to become an artist in your life. And there are times that you have to just push through those walls. And then um, because I had a long gap in between in my life that I could not focus on art. And uh, so for that long gap, after I tried to come back to it, it was quite a gap. I don't, don't have anything on the resume to show any uh, art gallery or to show the high-end boutique or, um, but what I have to do is I, I did this, the thing that which is unprofessional, but I that's how I how I make it happen. I actually I basically find a, a cheap a plane ticket. I, I put a couple of artwork, a couple of pieces of artwork in my backpack. I just simply walk into the art gallery and I pull my 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 pieces and said, "Will you represent me? Um, this is what I what I make." So um, a lot of people said that's unprofessional. Absolutely, I totally agree. 
but that's how I make it work just because that's the only thing, only way um, at the time I think that I could succeed. So, um, and then also um, just, you know, a lot of time that we don't give ourselves enough credit. A lot of time we see there's a lot of uh, roadblock. We got afraid, we, we second guess ourselves, we stop. Um, I wanna tell everybody that if moment like step rise up, don't give up, just take a break, you know, calm yourself down, go do something you like. I don't know, take, take a walk in the woods or just, you know, listen to some music and just, just calm yourself down and then have a micro goal rather than say, you know what, I wanna get into, you know, 10 art galleries in one year. How about just tell yourself, and maybe I will get into two art galleries in one year. If that too happened within three, four months, great. Maybe you can add a couple more little things into your target list. That How can you make that happen? Um, I, I was fortunate in a way that I do have people in my life that uh, give me pointers, which is uh, my teachers. Uh, one of my teachers, we still have contact. Um, every, just about every other week, we will call each other. She will encourage me and then she will tell me that, you know, uh, if I feel down or I have self-doubt for my um, exhibitions or pieces, I will talk to her about it and then share my thoughts with her about the, the process or material uh, that I choose. She will give me pointers. And then that's after 30 some years, um, I still have that kind of relationship with my teacher back in uh, New Brunswick College of Craft and Design. I find that's incredible. And you will never find a school will uh, give you support like that. So I definitely encourage you if you if you find that, you know, I'm what's gonna happen after I signed up, would I become a professional artist? Uh, would I fail? Just like everybody else said, just, just jump in because if this is in your heart, just jump in and then one step at a time, don't, just don't, don't, don't overthink it. Let's put it that way, so. That's, that's such great advice. Um, and both Tina and Ichan are um, so impressive and amazing um, crafts people and artists and their imagery and everything that they do. And you can hear they still have those same concerns that everybody has, you know, is we're our biggest critics about our work and and we all go through self-doubt and it's always a journey. Um, so, you know, part of what we teach at NBCCD is how to express yourself um, within that community and how to gain the confidence to own your work um, and make those connections so you have a support system. And Tina, I know um, that you uh, are often, well, one, I know that your kits are really amazing. So I want us to, I want you to tell us a bit about some of the kits that you do, but also um, I know that you use a lot of your culture as part of your imagery um, and to influence your work. So I think um, if you wouldn't mind sharing that, we have a lot of international students listening today who may be looking at moving to Canada. So what would you like them to know about being able to bring that culture with them? So, yes, um, uh, I was making um, little kids to make um, uh, talisman dolls or like little souvenirs that people used to put uh, somewhere uh, as a, like for protection or just for reminder. For example, uh, um, for some of the craft shows, I was making harvest dolls. They were like that size. And basically it was like a tiny sack of rice dressed as a doll with like a little handkerchief and like a tiny like apron. And that is uh, Eastern European tradition and uh, farmers in old times, they put some fresh harvest wheat or rice or whatever they had into a tiny sack and put it in the kitchen to attract well. So you will always have something to eat. And I believe that every culture has something similar when they use some kind of like old, um, like pieces of old clothing, like from your uh, parents, grandparents, uh, because people reused clothes, right? And um, I think this tradition um, is uh, easy to 
understand and maybe to bring it to your life something that you would like to pass maybe to your kids or maybe to your friends and um for me being um like a foreigner in canada um uh was i can say like it, it was easy because i can feel that interest from people people were curious asking me about my uh, traditions and my culture and i was always happy to share everything that i know and um actually in canada there are people from different countries uh, maybe they're like parents or grandparents great great parents uh, they came from um, great britain or german or france or other countries and um uh, they all have their own traditions, their heritage, their bringing, and I think that um, it's a very nice way to know each other, just share the stories. That's wonderful. And Ichan, what was the community like for you at NBCCD? Did you did you make friends and meet people from different places? Um, back then, I was the only Asian student. And uh, to be honest, back then, my English uh, is really, really bad. I could not really uh, read or write properly. And uh, um, when I went into school, especially for the interview with uh, Mr. George Fry, he was the director at the time, I was extremely nervous because I wasn't too sure that he will um, allow me to grant me the uh, opportunity to become a student. But he he used very simple language and he totally understand where I'm coming from, uh, the, the English uh, gap, the, the, the issue. So, but he looked at me, he said, you have potential. Let's do everything we can to, uh, to you know, make that happen. So, and uh, luckily the school, everything's very hands-on. So for any international student, uh, if you worry that your English level may not be good enough, um, my advice is don't don't be afraid and then just you know just 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 do your best and then everybody around you they they're everybody very very helpful they will understand and then you might have to do homework a couple times more than everybody else because misunderstanding that happened to me a couple times but no big deal more practice for you so that that's a good thing um I find at the time the community it's a school uh, even smaller than now, the amount of students that we have. So everybody become a really good friend, close friend together. Um, there's a couple, uh, couple students back then, we still, three of us, we're still really good friend. Um, uh, we still contact each other quite often. And uh, I just, it, I find it's, it, you cannot get that in, in the bigger school, that kind of relationship. Everybody just like a family, everybody kind of, uh, you know, they're there for you. You have any question, you need help, anything like that. And then people willing to help, the teachers, instructor, everybody's willing to help, really willing to help. So it, it's great community for sure. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so we, again, our, the time is flying by, so we're actually nearing the end of this panel. Um, we are getting some students, they're sending in, thank you so much, thank you sincerely. Um, so you're very welcome and, and thank you, Ichan and Tina. Um, so maybe we'll just end on um, your fondest memories from MBCCD. Um, would one of you like to go first? Oh, I can go first. Sure. <laughs> uh, my... Um... Uh, fondest memory uh, was from probably tea parties that we had and um, you know that uh, we have studios on different like parts of the building and sometimes we don't interact much with people from other studios and um, uh, I uh, decided to try to make like little tea parties uh, just inviting students uh, to try tea and maybe to talk to each other and we had uh, some creative ideas we had um, uh, like a card making tea party and other tea parties and it was very nice to see people from other studios uh, during these little parties and uh, to share our 
like ideas and um, just making new friends. That that was great. That was my best memory, probably. Uh, my fondest memory has to be a uh, class related. Uh, back then, we have to take a course. It's called uh, three dimensional design, and the instructor was uh, Mr. Uh, Peter Thomas. He is the head of the uh, pottery studio at the, at the time. And the particular class that uh, usually we started with watching a video and then the whole series is called the shock of the new. Basically he would turn the light off of us sitting there. We just like, oh my gosh, not this again. You know, someone choked me now. And then it would just show you all the, the, the modern art and how the creator come up with the ideas and everything. Some of us fall asleep, some start to snore a bit. Some people are focusing just like that week after week. But the fun, the interesting is um, I learned so much about that from that class, uh, even now, because um, back then, a lot of time when we're watching those videos that you don't think that you don't really think that you're learning anything. Oh, you will remember that moment. But right now, even when I create, when I'm making pieces, some of the exercise that uh, um, uh, Peter, uh, Mr. Peter Thomas get us to do or anything, the flashes, the flashback of the, the video in, in the uh, that particular program, it helps me so much to create because it just, um, you know, it, it just, it just, it, no, anyway, to me, it just is wonderful to have that. Uh, and then I can keep coming back and then still using the technique in the program to help me to create. Uh, until these days, I use it all the time. So to me, that's the fondest memory. Ina, Ichan, thank you both so much for sharing your experiences and joining us on this sunny Saturday. Um, so we appreciate you taking the time. Um, and we, as always, are so proud of you here at NBCCD and, and enjoy following your work and, and your careers. And so please stay in touch and, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank good you. luck, everybody. And enjoy. Have fun. Thank you so much. Awesome. All right. So um, I'll let each and Tina turn off their cameras and um, depart. Um, so we are wrapping up today's event. Um, we have one final one minute video to show um, you all in the audience. And I think you'll really enjoy it. It was actually created by one of our photography videography students who is doing a marketing internship with my team. Um, and we also, um, you'll see a couple familiar faces, Bella and Orr, who were on our student panel. Um, and then another one of our current students, Youngin, who um, she's also one of our campus tour guides. So again, if you wanted to book a personalized tour in the future, you can do that and we'll set you up either virtually through Zoom, or you can come to campus physically and do your tour with us. Um, a couple final reminders before we go into the video. Um, I know our audience was pretty split on those having applied, those not. So just I'm going to cover all the bases here. Um, if you have not yet applied and you want to join us in, in September, um, please don't forget to submit your application by March 31st. That's our um, deadline for Foundation Visual Arts. Um, we do accept applications on a rolling basis after that, but that would be the priority deadline. So be sure to get your applications submitted in the next month. Um, if you applied for one of the diploma programs and you um, uh, didn't get a spot in them or you're on a wait list, um, or you think that FVA, Foundation Visual Arts, would be a more appropriate year for you, then we can help you make a switch um, in your application to FVA. So you can absolutely reach out to our admissions team to help support you with that process. If you've submitted the application, but you're missing documents, like you need to upload your portfolio, um, we still need your transcript or your English language proficiency scores. Be sure to get those submitted as soon as possible. And again, before March 31st, so we can have a completed application for you. Once we have that completed application, we assess your application and get you a decision right away. So be sure to complete your applications. And lastly, again, a big congratulations to all of you who have already been accepted. Um, again, welcome to the MBCCD family. 
Um, don't forget to pay your confirmation deposit. You have to do that within 30 days of getting your acceptance letter um, in order to hold your seat. Um, so again, any questions, they can all be submitted to our admissions team. While this video plays and I send you off, I am going to put into our chat um, the email addresses again for admissions, as well as um, Trudy and Juan Diego in recruitment. So if you have general questions, you can send those to recruitment, admission application specific to admissions. Um, and then um, there's a, two more questions we're gonna take real quick. Um, so I, these are great questions. Um, so I'll answer these now. So one question was about when do you apply for your studio um, during FBA? So Mike, thank you for that question. Um, so you do apply it in that first semester of FBA. So when you come in September, you would start your foundation visual arts year. It's a one year certificate um, around December and by January 15th, that's the deadline. You will need to make a decision on which two-year diploma studio you want to apply for. Um, and the studios include those different programs we mentioned, ceramics, textiles, photography, videography, 3D, and so forth. Um, and so you would apply into your studio of choice by January 15th during your FBA year. And then you will hear early J February if you've been accepted or waitlisted um, for, the, for the studio in the fall. Um, part of your foundation visual arts curriculum in first semester is every Monday you go on media explorations. And that means you actually get to visit all of the different diploma studios, um, or sorry, you pick five of them to visit. And you go in for about six weeks um, every Monday and you get to work and get your hands dirty and play in that studio and see what it's all about. Um, so this is a really great chance to discover, do you like the feeling of clay and being messy in ceramics? Or do you really enjoy um, developing 3D digital design, um, 3D worlds and maybe video game design or simulation or something for film? Um, or are you really interested in textiles and fashion or jewelry and metal arts and you love the machines and, and the hammer room and using the fire um, equipment um, that comes with working with metal? So you get to try all these things out. Um, one of the best things is discovering what you don't like. And then, of course, we hope that you discover something that is um, your absolute passion that you choose to pursue. So you would apply for that um, by January 15th during your FBA year. Um, and then every studio is two years. Um, they are two year diploma programs. So you come for year one and year two and you get your diploma. So I hope that answered your question, Mike. Um, one final question as well was about the difference in our online and in-person courses. I'm going to assume that you're speaking of, again about foundation visual arts. So yes, we have the in-person in Fredericton and the in-person in St. John FBA years year. And then we also have our FBA online program. Um, so they all have the same exact classes. So you're learning the same curriculum and content. You won't be behind or more advanced by being in one or the other. Um, it's simply a matter of preference or accessibility. Um, we did launch the online program this year. So more students that um, were limited by COVID restrictions um, were able to still pursue their studies this year. So that's a great option if, if you're worried a little bit about um, uh, travel restrictions or what next year will look like. But one of the other benefits of the online FBA program was having this um, kind of virtual global classroom. There were students from eight plus different countries in this year's group, and it's mostly asynchronous, um, which means you have a meetup each week as a group, but otherwise the learning is on your own time. So you really get to be flexible and create your own schedule. If you're working or caring for family, this will really help um, you not have to go to a set class every day. You can do the work on your own time. So there's benefits to both. Um, we actually hosted Foundation Visual Arts webinars this month, and um, those recordings are 
going to be made available on YouTube, but if you'd like the direct link, you can reach out again to the recruitment and admissions teams, and we'll send you the direct link for FBA in person and FBA online so you can hear directly from those two teams. All right. Well, we're going to wrap things there. I'm sorry if we didn't get to your question, um, but again, I'm going to put the email addresses for my teams in the chat so you can get in touch with us um, after this event. And I'm going to now put on um, this short video by our students. And when that concludes, we will be closing the webinar. So thank you all again for joining us today. And I hope to meet you all um, on campus in the future. My name is Maria Isabella Basque. I'm Or. Hi, I'm Youngin. NBCCD is devoted to helping its students find new ways and succeed independently in their arts. Um, the biggest goal with our school is to make sure that we are equipped with the skills that we need to explore our own and newer forms of art and mediums. My instructors help me understand what I need to work on and what I'm good at and what I can bring to the table. They just, they just prepare you to work in the field. In my program, my instructors have equipped me with brand new skills in both 3D and 2D design, as well as social skills, being able to approach new artists and find things that I never even dreamed possible. <laughs> They're not only teachers. They are sometimes they're friends uh, who work in the same field. I describe it just like a little family. Wherever you go, there is somebody there to help you, give you a hand, and you er, anywhere you go, you probably could see a familiar face. The NBCCD community is a family. It's a space to find new friends and get advice and find better ways to advance your work. NBCCD is not walls and spaces, but people with a shared passion for creating, making, learning, and viewing the world in a full, vibrant color. We are NBCCD. I am NBCCD. I am NBCCD. I am NBCCD. I am NBCCD.